Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Minister Brown's Lord, dear Hanke, warmly welcome to Jakarta. It is an honor for me to host your first ever visit to Indonesia as the foreign ministers of the Netherlands. But this is not our first meeting. We met in New York on the sidelines of the UNGA in September, and we also met again in New York just last week on the sidelines of the UNSC debate on Gaza. Colleagues, the Netherlands is one of the most important partners for Indonesia. Mutual respect and mutual benefits embodied in our bilateral relation, including respect to sovereignty and territorial integrity. This, this year marks a decade of two countries' comprehensive partnership which started in 2013. I'm glad to observe the partnership has grown stronger over the past decades, marked by the increase of high-level visit of initiatives and signing of more than 30 bilateral treaties. I'm very delighted that today, Minister Brownslot and I have jointly launched the Plan of Action of the Comprehensive Partnership for 2024-2025. The POA will serve as a roadmap for our continued partnership and collaboration. I am also welcome the signing of the MOU on cyberspace cooperation today, marking another field of cooperation on the emerging issue of cyber. Colleagues from the media, during our meeting, we discuss a number of topics and I raise a number of issues. First, on trade. The Netherlands is the second largest trading partner for Indonesia and Europe. And last year, our bilateral trade reached the highest record of 6.23 billion US dollars. And we share the same views on the importance of finalizing Indonesia AU CEPA negotiation as soon as possible. I mentioned Indonesia concern on the discriminative policies of the EU against Indonesia commodities and express Indonesia appreciation for the Netherlands constructive effort, among others through NISCO programs and sustained palm project in Indonesia. And this project is very important to promote sustainable palm oil cooperation with Indonesia. Second, on investment. The Netherlands is the largest investor from Europe, contributing more than 15.5 billion US dollars since 2013, with a yearly average increase of 15.8%. Building on this positive progress, Indonesia invites the Netherlands to explore broader opportunities, including on green investment. Indonesia also appreciates the Netherlands' commitment to supporting energy transition, promoting sustainability in Indonesia, and to strengthen collaboration on sustainable port development, sustainable shipbuilding, and also on solar and wind farm energy. And moving forward, Indonesia hopes to strengthen cooperation to develop semiconductor industrial ecosystem in Indonesia. And then third, on social cultural cooperation, I welcome the positive progress of the first stage of repatriation of Indonesian cultural object from the Netherlands, marked by the return of four Singosari statues on 17 August 2023. I also highlighted the importance of collaboration between our institutions, museums, including shared knowledge and capacity building. I also conveyed to Minister Hanke this is timely to establish intermedia dialogue cooperation, emphasizing the role of media in promoting culture of peace and tolerance, and also to foster youth exchange program. And fourth, on regional issues, I welcome the Netherlands as the new 
Development Partner of ASEAN. And this partnership will contribute in strengthening the ASEAN-EU cooperation. And lastly, on global issues. We continued our discussion in New York on the deteriorating situation in Gaza. The position of Indonesia is crystal clear. Humanitarian issue now should be the focus of all of us. The UNSC had another meeting this morning in New York, Monday morning in New York, listening to the report from UNRWA, UNOCHA, and UNICEF on the situation on Gaza. All the reports mention the increasing desperation of the people of Gaza. I want to quote a part of the report of the UNOCHA. I quote, the situation for, the, for more than 2 million people trapped in Gaza Strip is catastrophic. They have not injured a siege and continue bombardment for 23 days. And according to the Ministry of Health in Gaza, more than 8,000 people have been killed, 66% of whom are women and children. Ten thousands more have been injured. The scale of horror people are experiencing in Gaza is hard to convey. People are becoming increasingly desperate as they search for food, water, shelter amid, the, amid a relentless bombing campaign that is wiping out whole families and entire neighborhood, unquote. So I cannot understand with this kind of humanitarian situation, the UNSC remains idle until now. And Indonesia will not take a back step in defending justice and humanity for the people of Palestine. That is all from me, Minister Hanke. So now I would like to invite Minister Hanke to convey your views. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Uh, Minister Masuri, dear Edna. Uh, thank you for a very warm welcome. It's truly been a great start to today's visit. Um, I've been Minister of Foreign Affairs now for almost two months, but it's already the third time that we are meeting in person. And that, of course, is equally a great start. In in Indonesia was one of the first countries I chose for a bilateral visit. This reflects the special and close relationship that our two countries have. And it's at the same time, Time, it also shows that we have a lot to discuss, as we did today. We discussed our shared concerns regarding the developments in the Middle East, Myanmar, for example, but also our shared outlook on how to face global challenges, or I should say, our challenges and our future. Our pursuit of a stable and peaceful world based on international law and that too is a good and very solid starting point. Because I strongly believe that in the year 2023, the most effective way forward is through partnerships based on shared interests and a common outlook on the future. Today we spoke about how we can further strengthen and deepen our relationship. For example, by giving new impetus to the agreements in the 2013 Joint Declaration on Comprehensive Partnership. We spoke about the recent and very worrying developments in Israel and Gaza, where events are developing rapidly with innocent victims on both the Israeli and Palestinian side. These developments demand a concerted diplomatic response. We have grave concerns regarding the humanitarian situation in Gaza and the lack of 
immediate humanitarian access. This is why we must call for humanitarian pauses and the establishment of a humanitarian corridor. The Netherlands is using all means available to facilitate the entry of food, water, fuel and medicines to Gaza. Israel has the right to defend itself against the terror of Hamas, but must act in accordance with international law. Civilian casualties and regional escalation must be prevented. This requires restraint from Israel when it comes to the use of force. Even though any peace negotiations are a long way off, the two-state solution is the only realistic path to peace and security for the Israelis and Palestinians. And this is what I also stressed last week in New York. Ladies and gentlemen, today we also spoke about our shared challenges and goals. Climate change, for example, is seriously impacting both our countries. It's great that our countries jointly host a renewable energy and climate summit in Jakarta in mid-October to share lessons learned and to boost investments and trade in the energy transition. And we are looking forward to the follow-up. In our efforts to work towards a sustainable future, I'm pleased to announce that the Dutch Minister of Foreign Trade and Development Corporation is proposing 105 million euros in investment grants as part of 300 million euro cooperation program through our partnership with Invest International. This program may also include Dutch loans and will support sustainable and inclusive public initiatives in sectors where Dutch expertise can be relevant, for example, in the areas of climate and energy, agriculture and food, healthcare, water and infrastructure. What's more, for a green, sustainable future, we must tackle deforestation together. I want to congratulate Indonesia on its huge efforts to reduce deforestation over the last few years. The Netherlands is one of the largest importance of sustainable palm oil in the EU, and we are committed to further working together with Indonesia to make the palm oil sector more sustainable. And today we also discussed promoting religious tolerance, something to which both our countries are strongly committed. For that reason, we continue to facilitate a yearly interfaith dialogue. We also spoke about how we can work further together on closer on cyber issues. And today we signed a memory of understanding to further deepen our ties in this area of cyber security. It's a vital cross-cutting topic. I'm confident our cooperation will benefit our security and our economic interests. And we stand ready to deepen our exchanges with the Indonesian authorities. Ladies and gentlemen, Indonesia and the Netherlands are helping each other to reach shared goals. And in that aspect, I want to thank again Minister Masudi for her great efforts that we can now be a development partner of ASEAN, a big important step for the Netherlands. Thank you for your efforts. And I'm truly proud that our countries are such great partners, friends. I firmly believe that our partnership will serve as a solid starting point on the road towards the greener, safer and better future we all want. And I'm also convinced that working towards that future together will make our friendship even stronger. And that's a double win indeed. So I thank you profoundly, Minister Masudu. Thank you, Retno. Thank you. Thank you very much, Hanke. Thank you. Thank you.